Hello, you're welcome to Kaya C's YouTube channel and this is the Bluefin Lady speaking. I am here to talk to you today about Maya. Um, I'm guessing you're all here to learn a little bit about it, um, as this is going to be a very basic tutorial, um, go at, well, not so much a tutorial, more of an introduction, um, just to let you get to know Maya, what it's about, the kind of things you can do, what button does this, that and the other, and how you can use them. Uh, I'm not going to go through modelling uh, just yet or anything of the sort. This is just so you can get a little bit more used to the layout, just so it doesn't look so scary. Um, I'm going to try and to, to explain everything as simply as possible um, because there is a lot of terminology involved and uh, a lot of YouTube tutorials, they're, they're great. I mean, they usually know what they're doing, that's wonderful, but um, even I get confused sometimes with, uh, with what they're talking about um, and everything just seems to go a little bit too fast. So, I am going to go through this uh, bit by bit, show you the most important aspects of Maya that you will need to become familiar with and uh, hopefully we'll get you started using Maya. Uh, you don't have to be a student, even if you're just doing this as a recreational thing, um, it's always useful to find somewhere to start. So I will try and use my, my four years of knowledge to, to get you started on the right path, basically. Okay, so when you open Maya, this will be the version um, this is a, uh, isn't the most recent version, the most recent version is 2017, but it is broken as hell. Please do not download it for the sake of your own sanity. They are still trying to fix it. Um, there are a lot of bugs and I have nearly torn my hair out trying to do anything in it. Um, so I'm while I'm waiting for that, this is the 2015 version and this is what it looks like. Um, if your version looks a little different, if you have the 2016 version, don't worry. Roughly, they have roughly the same layout, they just like to change the way things look, like literally every edition. So don't freak out too much, everything should be mostly in the same place and mostly do the same thing. Um, I will just show you what it looks like in here. And when 2017 is finally working, I will show you what that does as well, um, because it's easy enough to translate once you get to know it. So this is what you have here, this is your perspective view. Um, and this is what you'll use to sort of get used to uh, your, your modelling and sort of get a good view of everything, how it's looking, how it's building. Um, right, so to start off with, simple controls. You, in order to move your grid as I'm doing at the moment, you want to press um, Alt on your keyboard, press and hold, and then click. And that will drag it around for you. Uh, it could be that as you've downloaded it, you have a little cube up in the corner here that says um, whether you're at the front, the back, the sides, top, bottom, that sort of thing. Uh, but that can be disabled and enabled at your will. Okay. So, uh, we also have different views. Uh, there's more than just the perspective view. So, if you press once on your spacebar, you then get these four windows. So you have top, front, side, perspective. And it will tell you just down here which view is which. And if you hover over the bar you want and then press the spacebar again, you get it there. Okay? Uh, you can also tear down uh, just so you can use both views at once if you really want to. I find that confusing, so I don't do that, but it's up to you. It's personal preference. Uh, okay, uh, there is another way to do it as well. If you press and hold the spacebar, you get this lovely menu. So it's basically everything you could need in one little area. And as you click on each bit, it will give you menus like that. Okay, so uh, you also have your perspective views here. So say I want to go to the top view. Roll out. There you go. That's my top view. But I don't need it. So perspective view. Okay. So, these three buttons up here, number one, the attribute editor is your friend. You want to use the attribute editor for pretty much everything because that is where you will get the most accurate uh, texture or design that you are looking for. It can mess with every single object you can possibly create and every texture um, and it tells you all the history of each object and all that kind of stuff but I'll go into history and stuff a bit later um, in a modeling tutorial. Next up are the tool settings. So these are your tool settings. 
at the moment this is the basic menu that you get when you haven't selected anything. Uh, so you can choose soft select, you can do all sorts of stuff with that. Again, I will show you all of this when we come to actually model things. And then you have your channel box, which is great if you have multiple objects, please excuse the Facebook noise in the background, and uh, you want to put them on separate layers, maybe you want to hide them, maybe you want to categorise them, this is what the channel box is for, okay, as well as several bits and pieces. Okay, so remember those three, those are important. What you next have, you have your timeline down here, this is where the animation takes place. Now every single one of these is a frame. There are roughly 24 to 25 uh, frames to every second of animation and that is an important principle to remember. Um, you can sometimes have 30, you can sometimes have 20. Depends on the kind of animation you're going for, what kind of style you want, if you want it to be real time, if you want it to be slower. It's all down to you. Again, it's personal preference, but the industry standard is usually about 24 or 25 frames per second. Okay, so you have a slider down here that will show you the amount of animation you've got. If you want to increase the amount that you need, then type it in here. Say I've got to 3000, so that's going to kill my computer if I do anything with it, but that is effectively what you've got. So you can then slide that menu along to see different segments all at once. Okay, I'm going to just put that back down to 200 before I break something. Um, so yeah, that is the animation timeline. You can select and set frames on this timeline. Uh, it can in between for you, there are curves and all sorts of things that will help you do animation. I'm not going to go into that now because it's far too much. Then you have your mouse script down here. I would say only use this if you really, really know what you're doing. And I don't know mouse script, so I can't tell you much about it. Um, but it can help you do different things, um, get you do, get you different effects, get you different um, sort of just just different things. Basically, it can add things to your animation and to your model in general. Um, but I never really use it, so that's it's not the be all and end all. You don't need to know mouse script in order to use it uh, in order to use my so that is the timeline. Okay. Next up, we have this bar here. Um, at the moment it's in polygons, that is the standard when it opens up. Polygons is the menu you want to be in when you're starting off, you, uh, that's where you want to be. So make sure at any point in your modelling that you are in the correct toolbar because otherwise you will not have access to everything that you really need. Um, you also have the animation toolbar, you can see that changes when I select it, it gives you different options basically. The options are elsewhere, but you have more of them when you use the proper channel. Okay. So I'm going to stay in polygons because that's where we always start out. Okay, next up we have this bar here, which has every single thing you more or less need to get started. Um, custom is where I put all of my custom uh, control um, controls for my models, but uh, we're not going to look at that just now. You have end cloth, end hair, fur, fluids, all that sort of stuff, which is much more advanced. We don't use that yet. What are you saving? There is nothing to save. Go away. Um, but yes, yeah, so it will always start you off on polygons, obviously. That's where you need to start. The animation here with joints, skeletons, that sort of thing. Again, I will go into that in a later animation tutorial. Um, next up, I would say that we'll have to have a list because all of the things that are available in here are available up in these toolbars as well. Um, and it's actually easier to learn this way through looking at them, I'd say, than learning which of these tools is which. Um, you can create things up here as well as from this menu here. So for example, let's start off with a basic cylinder, okay, so this is just a click and drag thing, and that gives you a basic shape there, okay. Now if you want to mess around with it, there are two ways to do that, a tribute editor, your friend, you have these options up here, and each one the P cylinder, this is what we've got here, it's a polygon cylinder, 
It's the first one we've made, so it's number one. So you have translate, rotate, scale, all these different bits here, which will tell you where it's positioned on the grid, how much it's rotated in the space, and the scale of it. So the scale is set to one because that is the base scale of the object you have, you have drawn. Um, cylinder shape, and then your poly cylinder will tell you the physicalities of it, basically. So at the moment we have eight subdivisions. I can heighten that, I can lessen that. Usually for start starting off with a model, I will stay at around six to eight polygons. Please, for the love of all that is good, do not start off with a 30 polygon object because you will soon find that it is incredibly difficult to model things accurately with that many polygons. And also your computer will hate you for life. Um, it will crash, it will burn, and you will lose things, and it's not fun. So stay low. When you're starting off, always stay low with the value of your polygons, okay? I will go into more detail with that later. Otherwise, there is a way to create your polygon from scratch exactly the way you want it. So if we go to this menu here, create polygons, do not use NURBS, they are not um, good for solid modelling. They act differently to polygons, so you, um, I, I've never really had to use them before, um, but the times I have, it has completely screwed up my model um, because they act very differently. So you want to remember polygon primitives, that's the one you want. Cylinder. Everything with a square next to it has options. So if you click on a square, it then opens up the tool settings, and you can choose here how many you start off with, how many height divisions, how many axis divisions, how many cap divisions, okay? So say I start off with eight axis divisions and I have about six height divisions, click and drag, and there you go, you have it there. Okay. So the height divisions are these ones here, the uh, horizontal ones, and the axis divisions are the vertical ones. Um, cap divisions also put rings in here, for example, if I go to subdivisions, caps in the attribute editor, I can add, I can add more in there. Don't really need them for this moment in time. Okay, now I'm going to use this object quickly just to show you the two main modes you can be in. There's the object mode, which we're in at the moment, and with object mode this will show you, well, every object basically. Uh, you click on the individual object, that's all you can manipulate in object mode. Um, so, uh, say that I go into X-ray, I can go into X-ray from here, <coughs> which is this button here. Uh, I have wired on uh, wireframe on shaded, so that means you can see the object and you can also see the polygons in it. Then you just have the wireframe, which is this button here. Turns off the shaded mode. And you can just see the basic frame of what you're looking at right there. And you can only have one at a time. Um, this ball here, I will go over in a second, this is textured. So as you can probably guess, it shows the texture that you add to your model. Sometimes if a, if a texture does not become immediately obvious on your model, do not despair, just click on this button. If it still doesn't turn on after that, that's when you have a problem, okay? Uh, but just remember, if you are applying textures, um, like files and pictures that you've drawn and stuff like that to your model, you want to turn on this. Okay. Um, next up, we have component mode. So that's the, the second mode that you have. So this is your object mode, this is your component mode. The component mode and the object mode are important. Do remember where they are and remember to use them regularly, okay? Um, component mode helps you deal with each individual component. So, at the moment, I am on the point component button, which allows me to select all of these purple points, and this is where all of the lines intersect to make a point, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. This point, don't worry about it just yet. This helps for um, UV points, so don't select that just now. We'll go over that later. And this is the line one, so I can click once or I can double click to select a whole line. Um, if I go to my hotkeys, R is for um, 
is for resizing, so I can resize that. If I want to, I can go to E to rotate it. And I can go to W, move it. Control Z will undo all of that. And then I have my face select, so I can do that. So I can select one face. Or if I select a couple in a row and then double click, I can select a whole row. I can delete them simply by pressing the delete button. And I can make a little box. Okay. Uh, so that's your object mode and component mode. These two are just as important. Now, uh, there is just one more thing I'm going to show you, just for the time being that you uh, should start to know. For example, uh, this is the rendering bar. Now the rendering bar, there are five different renderers that naturally come with Maya. You usually start off in Maya software, but this is not the one you actually want, okay? Um, it's good for showing you what is physically in front of you, but not what you actually get once you've done everything you need to. Um, Mental Ray, which is this one here, is the most in-depth and most um, uh, detailed renderer. So that will take a bit of time to render, usually it will take a bit longer. At the moment it will give you the same thing, but let me just give you an example. So if I just create a quick something here, if I just... If you press F on your keyboard, you can focus on the object that you've selected. Uh, and it will also work if you've selected different components that you see. So let's say I make make a quick shape. Do I make a vase or something? I don't know. It's a bit of a dodgy vase, but you know, I'll go, I'll go with it. Um, maybe we go to let's move that a bit. Oh, Christ, what are you doing? Smooth. Just to get a bit more. Oh, no, I'll go once more. I'll go once more. Okay. That gives you more polygons. It gets a bit smoother. Then what I can do, I can add. If I right click and hold, I can assign it a new material. And let's go for a Maya X material. It's fun. Uh, there are some materials that only show up in Mental Ray, uh, and this is one of them, um, because it has a lot more detail in it, there's a lot more depth to it, there are a lot more options, um, and things you can get, uh, such as glass. So I'm just going to make some glass quickly. Ramp up the transparency. Let's turn down the activity a bit first. So the glossiness will make it a bit of a rough glass. So we have our base, bars, base, whatever you like to say, and you can see that the material is affecting the, the object itself. So we go into Mental Ray, let's just wait for it to load and do its thing. You now have glass with refractions and reflections, which is always very nice. If I go into my, uh, uh, sorry, into my software, I will see nothing, because this, no, stop trying to say it. Um, this will uh, not be able to pick up the material that you have put on it now because only Mental Ray can recognize that material. Which is what I mean by, me by Mental Ray is a more in-depth renderer. It's not the best by far, there are plenty of other renderers you can get out there and if you are able to afford any of them that is great. I cannot however, so this is the best I can do to show you. Um, but you, so you can still get a pretty good idea, this is meant to be glass, you can kind of see that. Um, and it's useful once you've got backgrounds in there, once you've got lighting, you can get some really nice effects. Okay? So that is your renderer. Um, and I will go into more depth of that when I have something else to show you. Uh, but for the time being, uh, this is uh, obviously, I said this is going to be a brief introduction, so that's all I've done right now. Um, if you do have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. And I will try to answer them as fast as possible. I'm, I don't have much of a life, so I will probably be, answered to, be able to answer you very quickly. Um, 
and uh, yeah I hope this was helpful I hope I can get you started whether you're a student or whether you're learning in your own time uh, and uh, I hopefully will see you soon thanks for watching bye